Hello my friends, I am so glad you're here. Welcome to my channel. This is Erica Rose Pottery and I am Erica Rose and I was going to do a bit of a studio vlog for you guys today and I was just going to show you kind of what I do in the two hours that I spend in my studio each day. And the first thing that I start with is by, um, you know, checking on things. So these handles were pulled the night before and they were wrapped in plastic and now I'm going to take them out so that they can dry and get ready to be attached to the mugs that I made the night before. And this is the damp box that I use. I have plaster in the bottom of this and I wrap it in plastic and the lid just to make sure that everything dries really slowly and that there's no cracks. And this thing has saved my pottery. I used to get cracks in my handles every single mug and now I rarely if ever get cracks. And so I, this thing I highly recommend. Damp box is a must in my opinion. And after I'm done checking those, I wrap them back up and I let them sit for longer until I'm ready to uh, decorate them, which usually means Mishima or Mishima. I don't know how it's really said. I've heard it both ways. But um, so that's where they will stay and they will just dry slowly and it's really awesome. And then this is my block of reclaim clay. And so what that means is when I am hand building, I just take the scraps, I dunk them in water and then I put them back in this bag and then I will take them and wedge them a lot. So I'm gonna have to wedge this quite a bit because everything is so messy and not uniform. And I'm using the spiral wedge here. I think this is how you do it. I honestly taught myself. So um, yeah, I don't know, it works. That's all I can say, it works. And that's what it looks like. And after doing that a ton, we are ready to beat this thing into shape. <laughs> and so what that means is I'm gonna, you know, just smack it down to try to get it into a rectangle shape. And then I'm gonna take my rolly pin and I am going to any frustration or anger throughout the day is gonna be spent right here. And this takes some time. And if you have a slab roller, you kind of have to do this as well. Although I will say if you cut straight from the block, you won't have to do it as much. But because I'm doing reclaim, I had to wedge it up and do a crazy thick shape and everything. So after I've beaten it and I feel confident and good to go, I use these thickness strips. And all these are are some trim pieces from Home Depot. And they're a quarter inch thick. And the way they work is that your rolling pin will glide along these. And once you get to a certain thickness, they will only touch the rails and not the clay and therefore your clay will be a quarter inch thick now sometimes i get thicker and thinner parts i think it depends on how you're flipping your clay if you're flipping it it stretches it and so on and so forth and so um but it's okay it's not perfect i don't have a slab roller someday i hope to have one but in the meantime this definitely works just fine so after rolling and doing all of that business i'm going to release the clay and I'm just gonna make sure that I have enough room for two mugs. I like to usually do two mugs in the studio because I hand build two mugs and then I usually handle two mugs and then clean up and all that stuff. And uh, that's what I usually like to do. And I'm using a Mud Tools rib. This is a, a nice firm one. It's a really good for compressing. And I'm compressing everything just to get rid of any air bubbles that might be in there and just making it all uniform and nice and, and, nice and good to go. And this ro uh, textured rolling pin I got from Amazon and it works really well. It's got a really nice thick texture and it, you know, the glaze really loves to play on it and I really do like that. And any products that I use guys, I'm gonna try to link down below if I can still find them. Sometimes stuff is hard to find after a while and I've had some of these things for quite a few years. And now I'm gonna use my ruler and then this uh, clay knife, which is really awesome as well. And I like to use a ruler on the top and the bottom of my mugs because I really like the top and bottom to be even. I know that with hand building, it doesn't have to be perfect. And I think any hand built, any handmade anything, honestly, shouldn't be perfect. Just because I know personally, I have a hand built mug and the thing is wonky as all get out. It was the first mug I have ever gotten that was handmade and I love that thing to pieces just the feel of it it's very organic feeling and you just know that you know someone put their hands into this and like they made it and it's beautiful and it feels great to hold and it's just I don't know 
I personally love a good hand-built mug, in my opinion. Uh, you guys could be different. You might like your mugs to be perfectly smooth, and that is totally okay. I get it. I like both. Either way is good. And now I'm going to just uh, thin out that rim a little bit. And I like to do this because when you go to drink from something, like I've had mugs with a really thick rim, which is great for like chip resistance. I love that about it but I dribble all over myself. I don't know if I'm just like super goofy and I can't drink from a mug that has a thick rim because I just like dribble it all down my shirt. Uh, so I try to keep my rims, you know, fairly, uh, you know, a good thickness so that that's not happening to someone else and so they don't feel like a goof like me. Anyway, so we're beveling our edges here and I'm using this little tool and it works really well and that just makes it to where when we put this mug together and you'll see when I do it, it just gives it a nice overlap and it's very um, secure and it's really good. I've never had any of my seams pop. And now we're going to prepare the bottom and I like to thin out the bottom of my mugs just a smidge and that's because I when I go to join it I don't like a super thick foot at the bottom and so thinning it out just a little bit really helps with that. And you can see me patting my clay <laughs> like it's a it's a child that I love because I do. And I'm going to use my bisque made stamp here. I just made this out of clay and then bisqued it and it just has ER just for Erica Rose on there obviously and that's what I use for all my hand built pieces. And usually when I'm hand building mugs, I've noticed that I have a little bit of spare clay. So I'll use a cookie cutter and then I'll use this little thing that my husband cut out for me out of like a drill tool or something like that. And just press it into the clay like this from foam that you can get at like Joann's. It's just like upholstery foam and it makes adorable little like spoon rests. So I like to sell these as a set when I have my restock. So I'll glaze them with the same glazes and then they look like a really cute little set. So it's a fun thing that I do every so often. And now we are going to start building the mug. We've cut out all the pieces and we're ready to go. And I know that clay has a memory. I don't know if I've mentioned that. I might have. But So you always want to make sure that you're not like bending the clay in such a way that it's going to remember that shape. And the next thing you know, you have an oval mug. Unless that's what you're going for. Uh, so I try to just keep it in the round the whole time. So after slipping and scoring and only using water. I only use water. I don't use any magic water or I just haven't found the need to. I think it's because of the damp boxes honestly because they just prevent everything from cracking and falling apart. Um, like I said, lifesaver guys. I highly recommend them and I'll go ahead and I'll smooth out the inside after I've pressed the outside together and using the terracotta pot on the bottom I actually do that because that way when I go to put the mug on the bottom oh and here I'm just tapping it because when you smooth it out on the inside it kind of pushes it out so I like to make it a little even anyways I do the terracotta pot so that when I flip this bottom part onto the the circle here that they're both as round as I can get them and that way they will join as seamless as I can get them and so that way it's again keeping it in the round that's always the goal is just trying to keep it in the round and I might go to too great of lengths to do that. I don't know. I could be a crazy person. Uh, you guys should let me know. Do you guys go to crazy lengths or do you even care? Do you guys really care if your mugs are super round or like, do you like the organic feel of it? I would love to know. And so here I'm going to use my fingers and just, you know, push in where I need to and push out where I need to just to make those two parts line up and just look down and make sure it's round again putting it back in the round and then I like to start out by using my finger and a lot of these tips guys um, Jessica Putnam Phillips from Clayshare she does really great hand built things and she's she's amazing so if you want to like take classes more in depth on this definitely check her out um, I've learned some tips and tricks on my own and then I've learned a lot from her as well so I, I highly recommend her and I'm just going to use this rib because this does a good job of really joining those two and then this like knife tool gives it a nice bevel at the end it kind of lifts the pot off and makes it not so like stuck and then just a paintbrush on the inside seam there works really well again with the terracotta pot and I actually use this terracotta pot um, a lot recently just because I, I'm really trying to perfect the, the roundness of it all. And I'm going to use a mud tool rib here, the red one, very famous, and just kind of, you know, in the middle, like shape it out a little bit just to straighten it all out. And then this sponge, I'm going to use like a taco and I'm going to ride it along that rim until it's got a nice rounded 
rounded rim that's just a real a real joy to drink from and everything which is always the goal with our rims right and then again i'm going to put the terracotta pot in there now you got to make sure that you're not putting your terracotta pot in when it is wet because it will stick and you will have a hard time and it'll rip your clay out um so i've done that for sure <laughs> and so and then after i build that i start all over and i do it again but i won't show you guys that i'm just going to show you guys how i transfer from the bat to my damp boxes and i use the terracotta pot to you know that way when i'm picking it up i have something to press against and i'm not just like warping the mug because these are still pretty wet like i said i put these in right after i've been hand building them so that they have time to dry out and these mugs are the mugs that I had built the night before or the day before. And then these are the handles that I showed you in the beginning, me taking out a plastic. And that's kind of the process that works well for me. And then I'll attach these and I will end up pulling handles again after all of this, which I don't have the video of that, but I do have a video, I believe, of me pulling handles. I think, I could be wrong. If not, I'll have to make one. Uh, so I go ahead and I slip and score again with just water and then I uh, one tip that I have is look at your look how crooked this is Thankfully, I look at it from all of the angles and I fix that but if you don't you are gonna have some really crooked goofy mugs <laughs> and After all of that guys, I just go ahead and I clean up. I wipe everything down Usually sometimes I don't and that's basically a day in the studio. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you guys on future ones. Thanks guys. Bye Thank you.